so I'll hear people say, if you believe it, then you can achieve it. And the problem with that is they're leaving out the most important part of the equation. And that part is work, action, actually doing something. That's what you have to do to achieve anything. Yeah, you got to believe it, but you better get the work done. When you're a kid, you're all potential. It's chaotic potential. It can manifest itself in any number of ways. And you, you, maybe you don't want to give that up. So you're like Peter Pan. You want to be a kid forever because you don't want to give up the potential. And you look out in the world and all you see are Captain Hooks, you know, who've lost a hand, who are chased by death because that's the clock in the crocodile. It's already got a t taste of him. He's terrified by death and he's a tyrant. Well, I don't want to grow up to be that. So I won't be disciplined at all. Well, that's no good because the way the potential transforms itself into actuality is through discipline. You say, well, I don't know what to do. It's like, that's okay. Nobody does. Go do something. Do the best thing that you can think of. Put the best plan you have into practice. It's not going to be perfect and it will change along the way, but it will change partly because you become disciplined pursuing the path. And as you become disciplined, you become wiser. And as you become wiser, you become able to formulate better and better plans. What does it take to really make the changes starting tomorrow? It also takes more than enthusiasm. I know we're hearing a lot about enthusiasm these days, but see, that just won't do the job. So you can get all excited about lifting 200 pounds till you get to the gym. And then you need a new excitement. And the new excitement is called discipline. Major step to human progress. Discipline. If there's one thing to get excited over, that's it. Get excited over your ability to make yourself do the necessary things. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. Commitments don't have nothing to do with your feelings. You do it because you're supposed to. It's a lifestyle. Is that hitting that it's news button in the morning and not making your bed and not cleaning your house? You don't hit this news button. You get up. You don't want to go run? You go run. You don't want to go swim? You go swim. You don't want to make your bed? You make your bed. You don't want to clean your house? You clean your house. You don't want to study? You can study. That's how you start to callous your mind. It's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. Do something that sucks every single day of your life. That's how you grow. You will never have a greater or lesser dominion than that over yourself. The height of a man's success is gauged by his self-mastery, the depth of his failure by his self-abandonment. And this law is the expression of eternal justice. He who cannot establish dominion over himself will have no dominion over others. I mean, imagine you only got a hundred, you only have a hundred thousand dollars to go buy a house. And so you go by, you go look at this house and it's like, Jesus, this house, man, it's like it needs a lot of work. It's like, well, that's all you've got. Well, are you going to pretend that the house is okay the way it is? Or are you going to look for where it's rotten and where the plumbing doesn't work and where the stove doesn't work? You have to go and look and see where everything needs to be fixed. And that's like, that is harsh, man. But, and then in order to do that properly, someone has to have taught you, it's, look, you aren't your problems you are. You're most fundamentally that which, if it confronts its problems, can solve them. And that's the hero myth in, in, in a nutshell, by the way. The hero is the person who confronts horrible, chaotic potential and tames it and makes something of it, right? That's the, that's the fundamental human story. But the problem is, is that you have to face what you don't want to face in order to fix it. Yeah. And, and so you look at all the things about yourself that need to be burned off, that need to be dispensed with. And that man, especially at the beginning, especially if you're screwed up, that might be like 95% of it just has to go up in flames. And it's painful. Even some of that stuff that you have to burn off doesn't want to die. And it'll scream in agony while you're burning it off. It's not pleasant. But if you know that you're the thing that can transcend your problems, most fundamentally, if you know you're the thing that, if it faces the problems, can transcend them, then you have the faith that would enable you to take stock of who you are. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals, not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. Remember that among the things over which we have complete control are the goals we set for ourselves. I think that when a Stoic concerns himself with things over which he has some but not complete control, such as winning a tennis match, he will be very careful about the goals he sets for himself.
In particular, he will be careful to set internal rather than external goals. Thus, his goal in playing tennis will not be to win a match, something external over which he has only partial control, but to play to the best of his ability in the match, something internal over which he has complete control. By choosing this goal, he will spare himself frustration or disappointment should he lose the match. Since it was not his goal to win the match, he will not have failed to attain his goal as long as he played his best. His tranquility will not be disrupted. The disciplined mind conquers all obstacles and achieves greatness, for it remains steadfast in the pursuit of virtue, undeterred by distractions or temptations. Discipline is the bridge between dreams and reality, turning aspirations into accomplishment. It is the compass that guides us through the storms of life, keeping us on the path of righteousness. By mastering our desires and impulses, we harness the power to shape our destiny. Discipline is the foundation of character, the forge where resilience and strength are hold. It is through disciplined action that we transform ourselves, inch by inch, into the best version of who we can be. This is from 12 Rules for Life. Rule 4 is compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Yes. Because you need to be, you need to have a, a hierarchy of improvement. You need be aiming for something, and that means you're going to be lesser than people who've always already attained along that dimension. Yes. And that can give rise to envy. So the question is, who should you defeat in the final analysis? And the answer is, you should defeat your former self. You should be constantly trying to do that. And you're the right control for yourself, too, because you're the one who's had all your advantages and disadvantages. And so if you want to compete fairly with someone, then you should be competing with you. And it is the case. And this is what we were talking about too with regards to the self-improvement of the fighter is well if you're improving yourself then what you are doing is competing with your lesser self and then you might also ask well what is that lesser self and that lesser self would be resentful and bitter and and uh, um, aggressive and vengeance seeking and all of those things that go along with having a negative moral character and those are things that interfere with your ability to progress as you move forward through life so it's very necessary to understand that this is why, you know, I've been stressing this idea of personal responsibility. It's like, well, personal responsibility is to compete with yourself, is to be slightly better than yourself the next day. Yes. And it better in some way that you can actually manage, and that's humility. It's right, like, well, I'm a flawed person. I've got all my problems. Could I be as good as person X? It's like, not the right question. The right question is, could you be slightly better tomorrow than your currently flawed self? And the answer to that is, if you have enough humility to set the bar properly low, then you could be better tomorrow than you are today. Because what you also have to do is you have to say, well, here's all my flaws and my insufficiencies and the best that someone that flawed and insufficient could do to improve and actually do it is this. And that's not worth going out in the street and celebrating with placards. You know? It's like, well, this is why I tell people to clean the room. It's not going to brag to someone that you did that. But someone as insufficient as you might be able to manage it. And that means you actually are on the path of self-improvement and you're transcending your former self. And you might say, well, what's the right way of being in the world if there is such a thing? And it's not acting according to a set of rules. It's attempting continually to transcend the flawed thing that you currently are. And what's so interesting about that is that the, me meaning, in, the meaning in life is to be found in that pursuit. So I've been laying that out in these discussions too because it's saying, well, the, the fundamental issue is that life is tragic and difficult, very tragic and difficult for everyone. And it's also tainted by malevolence because no matter how <clears throat> things are tragic and difficult, but there's always some stupid thing that you could do or someone else could do that could make it even worse than it has to be. So that's life. And you need an antidote to that because that can embitter you. Constant contact with that, just the tragedy, but the tragedy combined with betrayal and malevolence. <clears throat> that makes it even worse, especially if it's self-induced. Okay, so you need something to set against that so you don't get bitter and resentful. Well, what do you set against that? Doing something worthwhile, by your own definition, say. You need some reason to get the hell out of bed on a terrible day because you've got something good to do. Well, what's the best thing you can do? Transcend your current wretched and miserable self. There's meaning to be found in that, real response. And that's, that's a meaning that's associated with responsibility. One of the things that I've been trying to lay out clearly is that life is hard. 
It's tainted by malevolence and betrayal. That can make you bitter. You need a meaning to offset. Where's the meaning to be found? Not in rights, not in impulsive pleasure, but in responsibility. You take responsibility for yourself, so you take care of yourself. If you're good at it, you, can, you have some excess left over to take care of your damn family. If you're good at both of those, then you have some excess left over to take care of your community. Those are heavy burdens. You pick up the burdens, you find that's meaningful. The best way to pick up the burden is to continually improve yourself. And that's where the meaning is to be found. And so that meaning is in the continual self-transcendence. That's letting your old self die and the new self be reborn.